Welcome to Beat Diabetes, and the point of this YouTube channel is to do exactly as our name implies, to beat diabetes. And we are in the midst of a challenge. I call it the Fall 23 Challenge to Beat Diabetes. It's too late to sign up now. Uh, however, if you want to get on a list for future challenges, uh, there'll be a link in the description that'll help point you to the right page. But uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about today uh, has to do with what if things aren't going so good and you've been doing this for a while. I love to point out all the positive uh, feedback that we receive and the people that are so excited and thrilled, their blood sugar is going down, their A1C is down, things are looking good. But here is a comment someone sent me, an email actually. I wanted to read it and respond to it. Uh, for the sake of those who don't have these glowing testimonies yet, in fact, it may look as bad or worse than ever. So here's what this individual says, and uh, he starts out saying, Dennis, can you point me to a resource? My blood sugar is skyrocketing now toward the end of the challenge. 190 this morning with nothing to eat. My average is 150 throughout the day. Very discouraging. I started out great. Now it seems as if all is lost. I can't get back to my original numbers. They're higher now than when I started the challenge. My doctor is negative and told me I could not beat it and that it would gradually get progressively worse. Okay, I jotted down a few points that I wanted to make in relation to this kind of a, a situation. The first thing I can say is this is uncommon. This is not the norm for this challenge, but it's not totally uncommon. There are people that write things like this, a few of them, not a whole lot, but uh, I would be unrealistic if I tried to say that everybody's going to see wonderful results by this point in the challenge. Uh, one thing I have to say off the bat is I cannot give specific individual advice. So I can't say to this fellow, well, here's your problem. Number one, even if I was a doctor with all kinds of degrees and 50 years of medical experience, I still couldn't do it because I wouldn't know him. But how much more would that be wrong for me to give him individual advice when I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nutritionist, I'm just a common ordinary dentist. <laughs> so I, I can't give him advice, but I can say, I can make a few general points that I have observed and that I have read about. So let's make a few points. First of all, when you decide I'm going to beat diabetes by diet and lifestyle, and primarily the lifestyle is a low carb diet with intermittent fasting. Those are the two biggies. When you decide that, and you, let's say you are fully diabetic, seriously diabetic, uh, you've got things going on inside your body that you cannot turn off with the flip of a switch. Now, you can get lower numbers in a hurry, sometimes in two weeks, sometimes in one week you can get lower numbers. But you've got issues that need to be resolved. Uh, you may well have, probably do have fatty pancreas and fatty liver, visceral fat uh, around and within your organs. And uh, just because you eat low carb doesn't mean the next day all that fat's gone. It is not. Uh, your body's used to eating a low carb, I mean, excuse me, your body's used to eating a high carb diet, lots of sugar. If you've been on the standard diet, lots of refined carbs and carbs of all kinds. And as a result, your body has been messed up and it's going to take a while. So, uh, and, and people differ widely. Some people within three months, I mean, they've got that sucker beat and they are doing great and they may never see uh, blood sugar north, north of 150 milligrams per deciliter the rest of their life. But for many others, it's not going to be that easy or that fast. So one of the things that I would encourage people to do if there's no reason to think there's anything else besides just the stubbornness of your body responding to this approach, I would encourage people to trust the process and just know that when you eat low carb, and, and let me just say this, I've said it before, low carb is not even really low carb. It's just normal carb. That's the way we're supposed to be eating. So you're not doing anything weird or strange or freakish when you start eating low carb. You're just doing what you should have been doing all along, what everybody ought to be doing. 
So this is not a freak diet. This is just more or less a normal diet, although I will grant that at the beginning stages and in this challenge, you're probably going a little harder at it than you may have to in later years. Uh, but you got to trust the process unless there's a, your doctor shows you a reason that something else is going on. If, if you're just a standard type 2 diabetic and your pancreas is just pumping its little guts out because uh, you're eating way too many carbs and sugars and you become insulin resistant, then the lifestyle change, the low-carb diet, the intermittent fasting, time-restricted eating should do the job, but it may take a while. So let me just give you a, an illustration. Uh, some years ago, I worked with a man who in a former career had been a stockbroker and he had uh, been a very successful stockbroker. He had made a lot of money and he had uh, invested a lot of money in the stock market. So uh, he was doing very well until, if I remember right, it was the 1987 stock market crash, Black Monday, they called it, where the bottom just dropped out of the stock market. And uh, it affected anybody who owned stock, and he owned a lot of it. Well, he panicked and uh, within a short time had sold off all his stock and vowed, I'm never getting involved in the stock market again, at least as a personal investor. He continued to be a stockbroker for a while, but he got out. He sold out. Now, he lost a lot of money by selling out, but at least he had some money. He sold out before it <laughs> cratered altogether, which I don't think it ever did. Anyway, by the time I got to know this man, it was in the 90s, and the stock market had rebounded tremendously. And uh, these were during the, the mid to late 90s. I mean, our economy was roaring. And uh, I got to talking to him and we got to talking about how he sold all his stocks back in, I guess it was 87 or early 88. And I said, did you ever stop and think how much money you would have right now if you just held steady and stayed in the stock market up until now? He said, Dennis, I don't even want to think about it. He would have been a wealthy, wealthy man had he waited until the 90s. And, you know, people that... and and. I'm not a stock market investor. I'm just telling this because I, I got to know him. But people that uh, talk about the stock market, they say, if you're in it for the short term and you just invest some money and you wait and it's like, well, let's see where how much money I have next year. Uh, you could be disappointed. You could lose money. You, the whole thing could be a bust. But they said, if you invest for the long term, I mean, almost everybody says this. If you invest for the long term, and you're willing to buy some good stocks, not strange little fluky stocks of uh, questionable com uh, companies, but some really good solid stocks and just let the thing ride for a while, like 20, 30, 40 years, uh, you'll make big money. But you can't panic and you can't just pull out as soon as the stock market starts to dip. And I've thought about that in terms of blood sugar. When you adapt a low-carb lifestyle and time-restricted eating, the process is going to do you good over the long haul. But there may be dips and spikes all along the way. And uh, this one guy I read at the beginning of this video, he's like, well, I was doing okay, but uh, now it's worse than ever. And it, suddenly my blood sugar is up to 190 in the morning. I don't know what's going on. Can somebody help me? Uh, again, I can't, ref I can't speak to him directly, but in many cases... It may be one of those <laughs> downturns, except it's an upturn and a, 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 a spike in terms of your glucose, but one of those bad situations that you can't do anything about, but if you will let it ride, often that will be all that you need and you'll get past it. Your body is so used to carbs and sugars and uh, storing fat and storing sugar in your cells. You're just like a loaded <laughs> machine, like a loaded bomb full of sugar and fat. And when you go low carb, 
Suddenly your body wakes up and says, hey, this guy's not feeding us sugar and carbs like he used to. Let's shed some of that fat and some of that sugar. And it starts to release the fat and release the sugar. And, and it doesn't worry much about releasing a lot of insulin anymore. It used to have to release insulin every day. It was just survival. But now it's like, well, this is easy. Let's start doing a little repair and maintenance work on our cells, on our pancreas, on our liver. And as it starts dumping the fat and dumping the sugar, and not just the, the liver and the pancreas, but even the muscles and various cells of your body start releasing stuff that really didn't belong there. Your body's not supposed to be stuffed with fat and sugar. And so you may have a temporary upturn in your glucose. And uh, it's, that's not altogether a bad thing, although if it goes too high, it's, it's not so good. But it, it can mean, again, I can't say for this man, but it, it often can mean your body's in repair mode. It's fixing itself. And that is a very, very good thing. So that is something to consider. Here's a, a huge question when you're wondering, where am I in this whole scenario? Uh, my blood sugar's too high. I've been eating low carb for months. I've been, you know, keeping it down below 50 grams of carbs for months, and it's as bad as ever, maybe worse. Uh, here is a huge question for you, and that is, is your pancreas making a lot of insulin or making a very little insulin? And, you know, we have often assumed that every type 2, their pancreas is overworking. It's making all kinds of insulin. And that's often and probably usually the case. But there are some that their pancreas is so burned out and so overworked and so exhausted, it's not putting out much insulin at all. And if that's the case, uh, you may need to even consider injecting insulin and give your body a rest give your pancreas a rest. Now, if I had the choice, I can't speak for you. You talk to your doctor about it. If I had the choice, I would much rather inject insulin. I know for some people, that's like the last thing they will ever do. It's like, I'd just soon die as inject insulin. Well, I wouldn't. I'd rather inject insulin. If I was a type one, you can bet I'd be faithful injecting insulin, but I wouldn't have to inject nearly so much as many because I would eat a low carb diet still. But if you inject insulin, your pancreas is being given a vacation. And keep this in mind, just because you take insulin for a while or inject insulin for a while, that doesn't mean you'll always have to. Some people think, boy, once you get on insulin, you'll never get off. Well, if your idea is I'll just depend on the insulin, then that would be true. But if your idea is I'm just going to give my pancreas a rest for a few months, I'll inject a little bit of insulin to help it out and give my pancreas a rest and I'll stay low carb and then we'll see where we go. We've seen many diabetics that have reported, I don't take insulin anymore, but I used to take it for years. So just because you start injecting insulin doesn't mean you'll always have to do it if you're wise and if you're disciplined and if you stay low carb. But if I had the choice, do you want to take a med, uh, a pill that's going to force your pancreas to put out more insulin? Or would you rather inject insulin? I would much rather inject insulin because then my poor worn out pancreas, which is usually the case with type 2 diabetics, especially in the later stages, my poor worn out pancreas, if I take a pill that's going to make it produce more insulin, it's going to get more and more worn out. Whereas if I just inject it, my pancreas can say, oh, I've got an easy day today. So, and, and I'm not saying everybody should go out and, and inject insulin by any means. Most type 2 diabetics wouldn't have to. But if I had those choices, I would sure rather inject than take a pill that forces my pancreas to wear itself out even further. The good news is in many cases, pancreases can spring back to life when they seem to be failing. Now, if they're totally dead, as in a type 1 that's not going to happen. But in many cases with type 2s and they're just gradually failing, then they can come back to life if you give them a break. Now, there's two ways you can give them a break. You can just go to low-carb eating and intermittent fasting, and that's giving your pancreas a break. That's the ideal way. But if it's so far gone that it can barely produce anything, you may need to inject insulin. 
talk to your doctor. I, I'm not your doctor and I'm not your mama. So I, I, I can't tell you. I'm just saying this is would be my approach. Uh, and there is this issue of adaptive glucose sparing. Ann Mullins wrote a an article, it's on the Diet Doctor website, and she says, and she quotes Dr. Sarah Hallberg, who's passed on now from cancer. But anyway, Dr. Hallberg says, we definitely see in people who are doing low-carb long-term, the majority will find their fasting glu blood glucose becomes their highest value of the day. They're not actually having issues with blood sugar. They're doing really well. But if you're looking at a log of 24 hours of blood glucose, you'll see a high first thing in the morning and then a steady decline throughout the day with no big excursions in glucose levels, even after meals. And um, so it's not always a bad thing. Some people talk about how even your muscles, they get so used to living on fat now and, and burning fat for fuel, they don't even want insulin. They don't want any kind of uh, uh, glucose being put in them and they just kind of reject it and your blood sugar may go high for a while. Again, trust the process. If you invest in the stock market, just wait a while. You're almost certainly going to make money if you do it long term. But if you're my age and you've only <laughs> probably got a few years left or a decade or two, uh, that might not be the wisest thing. And one other thing for people that have really high fasting glucose, you might do better to go ahead and eat breakfast if you're going to just do two meals a day, which is what I strongly recommend you might do better to go ahead and eat a breakfast at 8 a.m. or something like that. If, if your blood glucose is going to go down, like as soon as you eat a meal, why not eat a meal for breakfast, get that blood glucose down, and then have your lunch, and then just skip dinner or have a bulletproof coffee for dinner or maybe a couple of boiled eggs as your dinner and cruise on into the evening and throughout the night with uh, really good blood sugar. Uh, a lot of things to consider, but one thing you really should do if you've got serious issues, and especially if you've been doing low-carb intermittent fasting uh, for six months and you haven't seen hardly any results, boy, I'd get that insulin checked and find out, am I making any insulin? Is my pancreas still doing much? And if it's not, then you, you need to talk to your doctor about what way to remedy that. So a lot of issues. Again, most people see victory. Uh, within a couple months, they're seeing significant progress, if not total victory, at least significant progress. In some cases, like this guy that I read at the beginning, he says, uh, I'm as bad now or, or worse than I was at the beginning of the challenge. I, I was better for a while, and now it's suddenly up. Um, talk to your doctor for sure. If you've recently been diagnosed with diabetes and you've just discovered this channel, let me recommend that you go to our uploads page, which will give you access to every diabetic video we've posted since we began. As you work your way through all our videos, I believe you'll find the help you need. A link to our uploads page is in the description.